when it rains, it pours, and if it pours too much, there will be flood. But what is the reason for flooding? The main reason is when the intensity of the rainfall is much more greater than the capacity of the drainage system, the pipes that we have buried under the ground in our cities. And the bad news is that we are expecting more frequent intensive rainfalls both today and in the future. So what should the cities do? Should we just throw away the system we have today and build a new one instead with larger pipes and larger capacities? Just imagine that only in Malmö there is about 900 kilometers of pipes already buried under the ground. Is it worth it just to throw away what we have? which is a great proportion of today's urban infrastructure. And the main question here is that, is it going to solve our problems? Well, instead of making larger capacities in the underground system, we could, on the other hand, decrease the load that we put on our system. And that is by introduction of retention-detention systems on the surface, so that the rainwater could be collected on the surface in large volumes before it enters the underground pipe system. In this way, we can let the underground pipe system breathe and relieve some of the pressure which is already built in the system. But these retention-detention ponds or structures, they don't have to be in concrete and boring, but they can be aesthetically designed and integrated into our urban spaces so that they can contribute to the livability of our cities. That's why we call these systems blue-green stormwater systems or sustainable drainage systems. In my PhD, I have been working on studying these solutions. And I have been trying to find ways to upscale these systems from local level to the whole city level. Because my hypothesis is that if we build enough many of these systems in our cities, we can we can sustain the use of the already existing pipe network without needing to increase its capacity. But there was a big challenge, and that was using models. The models that exist today commercially, they are very expensive, and they are expensive computationally. Only a one-dimensional, one two-dimensional hydrodynamic model, it maybe takes about weeks to simulate an entire larger scale city catchment. So it's very, very demanding and time consuming. So what I did was that based on the measurements I had out in the field, I developed a very simple concept of this complex system. And I, together with help from Mikkel Nulin, implemented it mathematically. And the outcome is a very fast model. So this model, can deliver the same results in a matter of seconds instead of weeks. And about the quality, well, the quality is quite acceptable when it comes to the comparison to the measured data. So this is where I have come today so far, and I have all the tools and the, all the equipment that I need to continue my way towards upscaling of sustainable drainage systems to the city level and uh, mitigate the floods in the cities. Thank you. Nice timing. Actually, you're, you're the closest one so far, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think this shows for uh, as a really good way of uh, working together as a department as well. As you said, you've worked with Michael to uh, yep. Uh, developed your model. Um, how come that, I mean, the the commercial model that you talked about, okay, uh, why is it so complicated then? I mean, when you can do it more simple? Yeah, because hydrologists are very nerdy. <laughs> 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 they want to dig deep into the details, the infiltration par parameters, evapotranspiration, all those complex systems. And that's because of course, the pipe system can be modeled very simple in a one-dimensional uh, model, and it is also very fast. But when you want to study the surfaces of, a, of the city, 
then it is very complex. Thank you.